In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, since early days, Christians have observed with great devotion the time of our Lord's Passion and Resurrection, and prepared for this by a season of penitence and fasting. By carefully keeping these days, Christians take to heart the call to repentance and the assurance of forgiveness proclaimed in the Gospel, and so grow in faith and devotion to our Lord. I invite you, therefore, in the name of the Church, to the observance of a holy Lent, by self-examination and repentance, by prayer, fasting and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Let us pray for grace to keep Lent faithfully. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made and forgive the sins of all those who are penitent. Create and make in us new and contrite hearts that we worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Have mercy on us, Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy upon me, O God, in your great love. In your compassion, blot out my offences. Wash me truly from my guilt, and cleanse me from my sin. Have mercy on us, Lord, for we have sinned. Our Old Testament readings written in the 58th chapter of the prophet Isaiah. Shout out, do not hold back, lift up your voice like a trumpet, announce to my people their rebellion, to the house of Jacob their sins. 
Yet day after day they seek me, and delight to know my ways, as if they were a nation that practice righteousness, and did not forsake the ordinance of their God. They ask of me righteous judgments, they delight to draw near to God. Why do we fast, but you do not see? Why humble ourselves, but you do not notice? Look, you serve your own interests on your fast day, and oppress all the workers. Look, your fast only to quarrel and to fight, and to strike with a wicked fist. Such fasting as you do today will not make your voice heard on high. In such the fast that I chose, a day to humble oneself. Is it to bow down the head like a bulrush, and to lie in sackcloth and ashes? Will you call this a fast, a day acceptable to the Lord? Is not this the fast that I choose, to lose the bonds of injustice, to undo the thongs of the yoke, to let the oppressed go free, and to break every yoke? Is it not to share your bread with the hungry, and to bring the homeless poor into your home? When you see the naked, to cover them, and not to hide yourself from your own kin. Then your light shall break forth like the dawn, and your healing shall spring up quickly. Your vindicator shall go before you. The glory of the Lord shall be regard. Then you shall call, and the Lord will answer. You shall cry for help, and he will say, Here I am. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of the evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness, and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually, and satisfy your needs in parched places, and make your bones strong, and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water, whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt, you shall raise up the fountains of many generations, you shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. To you I confess my faults, for they ever stare me in the face. Against you it is that I have sinned, and uneven in your sight. Have mercy on us, Lord, for we A reading from the second book of Corinthians, chapter 5. So, we are ambassadors for Christ, since God is making his appeal through us. We entreat you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain. For he says, at an acceptable time I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation I have helped you. See, now is the acceptable time. See, now is the day of salvation. We are putting no obstacle in anyone's way, so that no fault may be found with our ministry. But as servants of God, we have commended ourselves in every way, through great endurance, in afflictions, hardships, calamities, beatings, imprisonments, riots, labours, sleepless nights, hunger. By purity, knowledge, patience, kindness, holiness of spirit, genuine love, truthful speech and the power of God. 
with the weapons of righteousness for the right hand and for the left, in honour and dishonour, in ill repute and good repute. We are treated as impostors and yet are true, as unknown and yet are well known, as dying and see we are alive, as punished and yet not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing, as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing everything. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. While Jesus went to the Mount of Olives, early in the morning he came again to the temple. All the people came to him, and he sat down and began to teach them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery and making her stand before all of them. They said to him, Teacher, This woman was caught in the very act of committing adultery. Now in the law, Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now what do you say? They said this to test him, so they might have some charge to bring against him. Jesus bent down and wrote with his finger on the ground. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, Let anyone among you who is without sin be the first to throw a stone at her. And once again he bent down and wrote on the ground. When they heard it, they went away, one by one, beginning with the elders. And Jesus was left alone with the woman standing before him. Jesus straightened up and said to her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? She said, No one, sir. And Jesus said, Neither do I condemn you. Go on your way, and from now on, do not sin again. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Uphold me with your might, and strengthen me with perseverance. Open my lips, O Lord, and my mouth shall declare your The arrival of Ash Wednesday doesn't seem the most obvious event to cheer our hearts and raise our spirits in the present situation. The combination of freezing temperatures and lockdown have had a deadening effect. Perhaps we could do without the rigours of Lent and all its call to denial and self-discipline. But I would like to suggest that essentially Lent is a joyful season and to think about that for a few moments. We have the joy of approaching spring, the hours of daylight increasing, the shoots of new growth from the earth, the singing of the birds. Our little acts of self-denial bring us nearer to God, the source of all joy. We have the joy of learning new things, new things about God, through our attentiveness to the scriptures and to the wisdom of the saints. We have the joy of a new beginning, as on Ash Wednesday we are given a reset of our friendship with God. Like the prodigal son, we come to our senses and return to him, and there is joy in heaven over one sinner who repents. Above all, we have the joy of Easter approaching, when the proclamation, Christ is risen, will be heard by the whole world. At the Eucharist we say, Father, each year 
you give us this, this joyful season when we prepare to celebrate the Paschal mystery with mind and heart renewed. There might seem to be a danger of this becoming essentially self-centred or self-indulgent, but that shouldn't be so. A few weeks ago, a very loving, very wise monk, who knew me for the best part of 60 years, died. He played a major part in my life and vocation as a priest. I was asked by a friend how I would sum him up in one sentence, the essence, as it were, of his life. Impossible, of course, but here's what I said. Father Eric was close to God, and he brought God close to us. In a sense, that's what Lent is about, that we become close to God, that through us God may come close to others, and that in itself is a cause for great joy. So, as Lent begins, lift up your hearts and enter into the joy of the Lord. Let us now call to mind our sin and the infinite mercy of God. God the Father, have mercy upon us. God the Son, have mercy upon us. God the Holy Spirit, have mercy upon us. Holy, blessed and glorious Trinity, have mercy upon us. From all evil and mischief, from pride, vanity and hypocrisy, from envy, hatred and malice, and from all evil intent. Good Lord, deliver us. From sloth, wordliness and love of money, from hardness of heart and contempt for your word and your laws, good Lord, 
deliver us. From sins of body and mind, from the deceits of the world, the flesh and the devil, good Lord, deliver us. In all times of sorrow, in all times of joy, in the hour of our death and at the day of judgment, good Lord, deliver us. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your birth, childhood and obedience, by your baptism, fasting and temptation, good Lord, deliver us. By your ministry in word and work, by your mighty acts of power and by your preaching of the kingdom, good Lord, deliver us. By your agony and trial, by your cross and passion, and by your precious death and burial, good Lord, deliver us. By your mighty resurrection, by your glorious ascension, and by your sending of the Holy Spirit, good Lord, deliver us. Give us true repentance, forgive us our sins of negligence and ignorance, and our deliberate sins, and grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit to amend our lives according to your holy word. Holy God, holy and strong, holy and immortal, have mercy upon us. Make our hearts clean, O God, and renew a right spirit within us. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, I invite you to note these ashes as a sign of the spirit of penitence with which we shall keep the season of Lent. God our Father, you create us from the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be for us a sign of our penitence and a symbol of our mortality. For it is by your grace alone that we receive eternal life in Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. My friends, as I speak the following words, please make the sign of the cross upon your own forehead. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Turn away from sin and be faithful to Christ.
The Lord enrich you with his grace and nourish you with his blessing. The Lord defend you in trouble and keep you from all evil. The Lord accept your prayers and absolve you from your offences for the sake of Jesus Christ our Saviour. Amen. Since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, who has given us access to his grace. The peace of the Lord be always with you, and also with you. God of all goodness and grace, receive the gifts we offer, and grant that our whole life may give you glory and praise, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Gracious God, accept these gifts and with them our lives to be used in your service. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Blessed are you, Lord God, our light and our salvation. To you be glory and praise forever. From the beginning you have created all things, and all your works echo the silent music of your praise. In the fullness of time you made us in your image, the crown of all creation. You give us breath and speech, that with angels and archangels and all the powers of heaven we may find a voice to sing your praise. How wonderful the work of your hands, O Lord! As a mother tenderly gathers her children, you embrace the people as your own. When they turned away and rebelled, your love remained steadfast. From them you raised up Jesus, our Saviour, born of Mary, to be the living bread, in whom all our hungers are satisfied. He offered his life for sinners, and with a love stronger than death, he opened wide his arms on the cross. On the night before he died, he came to supper with his friends, and taking bread he gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Father, we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross. We remember his dying and rising in glory, and we rejoice that he intercedes for us at your right hand. Pour out your Holy Spirit as we bring before you these gifts of your creation. May they be for us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy things in your presence, form us in the likeness of Christ, and build us into a living temple to your glory. Bring us at the last with St. Mary the Virgin and all the saints to the vision of that eternal splendor for which you have created us, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, with all who stand before you in earth and heaven, 
we worship you, Father Almighty, in songs of everlasting praise. Blessing and honour and glory and power be yours for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Jesus is the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. This is the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given and shed for all. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace that we may always most thankfully receive these his inestimable gifts and also daily endeavour to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And we say together, Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Let us pray. May God keep us all our days. May Christ shield us in all our ways. May the Spirit bring us healing and peace. May God the Holy Trinity drive all darkness from us and pour upon us blessing and light. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you all, with all whom you love, this day and for evermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.